Welcome back participants. So this is fundamentally the part two of Reynard chromatography, paper chromatography. Over here, after TLC, we are jumping to paper chromatography. Paper chromatography uses stationary phase as a piece of paper. But nevertheless, speaking it as a piece of paper, we will say it to be cellulose. And cellulose is polar. So mind well, your surface has now become polar. Mobile phase, solvent or solution that does not affect the paper. This is very careful point to be understood. If you will take a solvent which affects the paper, then the chromatography is an utter failure. Why? If I am keeping a paper as a stationary phase and the mobile phase dissolves the paper, then there is no magic of chromatography. So over here, mobile phase has to be non-interactive 100% with the paper cellulose stationary phase. So that can be written as solvent or solution that does not affect the paper, does not affect the solubility of the paper or does not react in the form of or by the means of chemical reaction with the mobile phase. <coughs> paper chromatography is divided into three, ascending chromatography, descending chromatography and circular chromatography. Let us start with the first that is ascending chromatography. It is somewhat like TLC. Rather than taking a plate, you take a piece of paper. At the bottom, you place some spots of a mixture and you allow it to run with the mobile phase. The spots will get separated at different distance because each component present in the mixture has different interaction with the stationary phase. The sample that has least interaction with the stationary phase move towards the top and the one having the most interaction with the stationary phase remains at the bottom. So in ascending paper chromatography, a paper is kept hanging from a chair, from a support into a chair filled with the mobile phase such that at the end of the paper just touches the mobile phase. The mobile phase run upwards carrying with it the sample up till a particular height. All the components in the mixture get separated depending upon their polarity, their affinity, their interaction capacity. Descending chromatography, a failure. Why a failure? I'll tell you. Over here, the jar is at the bottom, the paper is hanging from the top, and mobile phase is spilled at the top. So, mobile phase will be coming down under the force of gravity along with the absorption phenomena of the paper. So, the mobile phase will run in a very different way. It will not run in a systematic way and this will cause a wrong measurement of the RF values. So, this is not a very good experimental technique that can be used. A process with the same application as ascending chromatography is demonstrated here only with a change in the flow of direction. When it is ascending chromatography, it is a capillary direction flow. When it is a descending chromatography, it is a gravitation direction flow. Here, the reservoir is placed at the top of the jar and mobile phase flows from up to down, from up to down. The sample here gets separate at the bottom of the paper depending on gravity. So, gravitational force is the only aspect that plays a role over here and it is not a very good technique that can be used as a separation technique. So, apart from ascending and descending, you have a third technique. But if someone asks us that among ascending and descending, which is a better technique in chromatography, our answer always has to be ascending chromatography. Now, circular chromatography. It is a subtype of paper chromatography where a paper is a square shape is kept on a paltry dish filled with a mobile phase which travels through the paper from the center to the periphery of the circulation. Friends, there are few concepts in chromatography that on reading through a presentation or a book does not enter into mind very smoothly, but their animations and video make it understand very well. So over here, first I'll go with the animation and then we'll come back to this slide. But remember, this paper 
can be of a square shape, can be of a circular shape. So do not worry for that. This is a video of a circular chromatography. So first we will go through the video and then I will come back on the explanation. We just have a proper look at the video. It has no voice. So first you have to take a circular paper and make a small hole in the center and mark it with a black or a marker pen. Now you are making a paper which is called a wick. I will explain you that this is called a wick. And what is happening? I will explain you. First look at it carefully. We are going to replay this video. Friends, fundamentally this is a piece of paper and this is a vessel under which a mobile face can be filled. Now mobile face somehow has to come towards the stationary face. So a wick, a small piece of paper which can help travel a mobile face from a jar to the paper is called a wick and it is also made from the same material from where the stationary face paper is made up of. So, this is how this experiment works. So this is our stationary face. We are going to make few spots around this periphery and we are going to use a wick to transfer the mobile face from the jar to the stationary face and when the stationary face will travel, uh, the mobile face will travel on the stationary face along with the samples will also travel. You can see the samples are traveling. The green spot is seem to travel a little more than the rest. How is it useful? I am coming to that point. Sometimes when you have a single sample and you go for an ascending chromatograph, sometimes the distance traveled is not accurate and you commit a mistake. But in circular chromatography, it helps us in gaining a very high precision and accuracy because if you place a same sample in all directions and allow it to move, then measure all the distance and take the average distance traveled. This will minimize your error. So error is minimized by the average and it results into precise and accurate values. What I told you, you might have understood that all the directions, the spot has to be same in few experiments of the same material and you allow it to run. Then spots are same. So generally they will travel the same distance, although if one is 2.1, 2.12, 2.14, 2.19, 2.17, take an average of all of them and it will result into a very good, precise and accurate result. So this was a video of circular chromatography which could help you. So over here this white color is a circular stationary phase paper. This white part which you might be having a visibility is nothing but a wick which is dipped inside the mobile face. So this is the inverted part. You can keep it like this so the wick will get inside. If this is the surface of the paper, this is the wick and there is the jar. So what will happen? When you will dip it from the jar through the capillary reaction, the mobile face will come up and it will start spreading. Over here, a simple animated direction of that mobile face has been displayed. So friends, this is how paper chromatography has three categories, ascending, descending and circular. Now, going further, over here, comparison between paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography, which is more better. Always, paper chromatography is a little bit lesser in values of scientific experiments compared to thin layer chromatography. The reason is better separation and resolution is observed in TLC compared to paper. Why? Because paper has several pores and they sometimes absorb the sample in a little value and hence the less amount of sample moves up. So the separation or resolution might be little bit of low quality. Variety of choice of mobile phase and stationary phase 
can be executed in TLC. The layer can be of silica, the layer can be of alumina, the layer can be of polymer materials, the layer can be of polyamides, anything you can use. But in paper, the layer is cellulose. So you have no choice of stationary phase when it comes to paper photography. But you have a large choice of stationary phase when it comes to TLC. Similarly, in TLC, you can use many solvents because the silica gel is generally inert towards all solvents. But paper is not inert towards all solvents. So the variety of using stationary phase and mobile phase becomes less in paper chromatography, whereas there is a wide range, wide spectrum of mobile phase and stationary phase in thin layer chromatography. And even the speed of mobile phase is more in thin layer chromatography to an extent, comparative extent. So, these are the three major points which make TLC more better than paper chromatography. So, remember when you are comparing between paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography, thin layer chromatography that is TLC is more better than paper chromatography. Applications of paper chromatography. Undergraduate and postgraduate level experiments for better understanding of the concepts involved separation of inorganic ions. If you remember your plus two experiments or first year graduation experiments, we used to separate Pb plus two ions with some other ions mixed in a sample. You can separate inorganic ions using paper photograph. You can separate dye and color samples. If you say that you are having an orange color marker, it is not necessary that the ink is only orange color. It is a combination of red and yellow. So there are two different chemical compounds, a red chemical compound, a yellow chemical compound. So if you put this orange dot, you might see a separation of red and yellow, which is seen over here. A spot of ink has been placed at the bottom and you can see several color that are present in the ink. Generally, we say black color. Black is not a single color. It is a mixture of many colors. So black spot can be elaborated and segregated into many colors. Separation of plant pigments is not at all new, plus, new for us. So, these are some of the very good applications of paper chromatography. So, paper chromatography, according to me, is a technique that is to be monitored by undergraduate students. But when it comes to TLC, even the master degree students and research students can get a very good experience on it and it is directly useful in the research. Paper chromatography is not of that useful at the level of master degree courses or research courses. So friends, thank you very much. We are completing this TLC and paper chromatography. If you have any queries related to it, feel free to contact me and of course, don't forget to give your feedbacks. Your feedback is helping a lot to me to improve myself. Hope you are enjoying the lectures. Friends, there are many clarifications today at the end of the video I want to make. Friends, most of you who joined on the first day have completed your MCQ test and the feedback form. But still, from my back office, I have got messages that few candidates who have appeared for exam have not filled the feedback form. And you know that we are not asking for names in feedback form. So please consider it to be your duty to fill the feedback form. It's a humble request from the organizers. Second and a very important thing. As and when you will be going through this video of paper chromatography, you have already entered into the day two of your course of online chromatography. Friends, as we have already written in the brochure or the advertisement flyer that appearing in all the tests is compulsory and appearing in final test is compulsory to gain the benefits of certification. As and when you will be completing this video and you will be going for the day two MCQ test, we have generated a sheet for us in which 
we have the name of the candidates who have appeared in the test one and keeping test one as a standard we are going to match it with the names in every test so don't forget to appear for the test now onwards test results of day one will be the threshold number of participants if any new participant is now enrolling he has to enroll in the phase two he cannot enroll in phase one still if you have any queries now onwards just directly give a call to me it becomes difficult to explain on whatsapp or any other media so please feel free to contact me for queries between 1 and 3 in the afternoon i'll be directly in contact with you through our subscribe channel thank you once again for your patience listening and active participation best luck for today's test and the upcoming test feel free to contact me for any queries and again your feedback are of much importance to us thank you